Namaste everybody. Yes. Namaste. Namaste. And uh, today, uh, it's about today, uh, we also, but this is better, this is Hindu Lounge. Hindu Lounge number 46 and it is a special, uh, it is a special and it's a very somber occasion. So that it is the uh, 50th year of the genocide that took place in Bangladesh. So let me, for all those who are joining us, let me introduce our show to them and also introduce our couple of special guests. So this is Hindu Lounge. Hindu Lounge is brought to you by Hindu Pact, which is a policy research and advocacy initiative of World Hindu Council of America or VHPA. Um, Utsada or Utsa Chakrabarti is uh, the executive director of Hindu Pact. And with it, so uh, it's uh, Majay Shah. I'm the president of World Hindu Council of America, VHPA. And uh, today we have two very special guests. And so uh, we have uh, Priya Saha. And uh, Priya Ji is, uh, associate, is from Bangladesh. And she is associated with, with HRCMB, uh, uh, which is a human rights group uh, for Bangladeshi Hindus. And we also have someone who's, who will go anonymous for the show for multiple reasons. His name is, for now, Bengali Voice. So welcome to both uh, Priyaji and to Bengali Voice. Um, and it's so enough for today. My name is Ojay Shah. Uh, namaste, Ajay Da. <laughs> I'm going to call you, instead of Ajay Bhai, I'm going to call you Ajay Da today. Because, and uh, How can it be Ajay? It could be, it, should, it has to be Ojay, right? It has to, yeah, it is Ajoyada for today. And uh, so we have uh, we have two amazing guests who have known myself personally for the last 10 to 15 years. And uh, we have Priya Saha. Priya Saha is, a, I should say, a pioneer in many ways in, in the Bangladeshi community and has been, uh, has seen, we will go into it in detail with Priya Di today, but... Uh, I will start off by saying that she has been there and done that. That is literally how uh, she has she has experienced uh, the, the past uh, 50 years of Bangladesh's history. And uh, and we have Bengali voice who uh, who is also a very close friend of mine. Uh, we are not going to reveal his name. Uh, and uh, he is uh, not from Bangladesh. He obviously before partition when everything was India, uh, we all have families uh, who came from Bangladesh in, in, in many of our families. But uh, he is from India and a leader in the Bengali community and a selfless activist. I have known him personally uh, since his university days. And you no, know, I have never seen anybody as sincere and as uh, soulful in the passion with which he works for the communities. And uh, he is probably one of the biggest uh, activists when it comes to saving lives in the Yazidi community. Not many people know about this uh, part of him, but he is also an expert on issues on Bengal and Bangladesh. Uh, so we have a very wonderful uh, group of people here. And uh, since this is the 50th anniversary of the 1971 genocide in Bangladesh, uh, it is very fitting that Ajay Bhai and Hindu Pact uh, are picking up this show for today. And thank you, Ajay Bhai, for uh, bringing this topic up. This is very apt for today. Thank you. So, the, so the, let me uh, formally introduce both our guests today. So Priya Sahaji is the Executive Director of Human Rights Congress for Bangladesh Minorities, that is the HRCBM that I referred to a little while ago. Uh, she has been the publisher of Dalit Katha, uh, uh, publisher of Bangladesh Journal of Minority. She is also the convener of South Asian Minorities Collective. And Bengali Voice uh, is a social activist. You already introduced him, but he grew up in Bengal and has been research scholar in the field of robotics and is, uh, currently works as a postdoctoral fellow. Um, and so like, uh, you know, uh, besides your formal introduction that you did, um, you have visited Bangladesh and you have spent quite a bit of time in Bengal, although we have said that you grew up in Madhya Pradesh, but you have actually, you have taken a, uh, you have, uh, you've been to, um, you know, West Bengal, you've been to East Bengal, so you're quite familiar with the, with the uh, situation in Bengal, correct? That's correct. Uh, I, I have been to Bangladesh and actually uh, my first meeting with Priya Saha was when I was in Bangladesh. Uh, so yeah, I've been to Bangladesh and uh, 
yeah, I, I, I have. I have also had some experience with dealing with uh, that part of the world. So, <clears throat> so, uh, so, welcome everyone. Um, so, the, why don't we start by you uh, introducing the overall what happened in 1971 in Bangladesh for people who are joining us. A lot of people who are joining us may not have even been born in 1971. So, give us the background of what happened in 1971. Why is that year, uh, you know? important in history? Well, 1971 was uh, probably a cataclysmic culmination of a hundred years of tragedy that Bengal had has been going through uh, in the hundred years before that. And I would say it, it as a cataclysmic culmination because as most people in India, as well as Hindu Americans may not be fully aware of, nearly 3 million Bengalis were killed, uh, most of whom were Hindus. And you know, this is something that uh, I think even young American Hindus are not fully aware of. And just look at the scale of the, of the tragedy here. And, uh, and, and yet in 1971, it was conducted by the Pakistani army, the, the genocide, but uh, not anybody has from the Pakistani army has been, uh, has been uh, prosecuted or even faced any uh, judgment on that. So from my perspective, if I am to introduce 1971, it is, it is the scale of the tragedy that the Hindu Bangladeshi Bengali community faced. It is the ignorance of the global community in terms of the magnitude of the tragedy. And it is the impunity with which Pakistan has, has gotten away and, and, and Pakistan's radical Islamist collaborators in Bangladesh have somewhat gotten away without paying the price for the crimes, the heinous crimes they committed against humanity. And I think today, uh, both Priyadi and Bengali Voice will be able to shed more light on the scale and the, and the ignorance that, that follows this tra tragedy. So, uh, <clears throat> please let me, uh, let me invite you to share your thoughts. Uh, you, were, were you, uh, you were in Bangladesh in 1971, correct? Yeah, I was in Bangladesh, uh, Didan, uh, the East Pakistan. Uh, I was at then uh, at six years old. So I can remember many more things. And, you know, after uh, coming back and lifelong, my parents share all their journey and every time. So that's make my memory stronger. My relative, my villagers, everyone um, continuously they share their story. and. So that is um, many things is vis visible for me uh, because you know that in the childhood memory it is very strong. You cannot uh, erase anyway. If you think yourself every moment you go back uh, your childhood. So I can remember very strongly what happened during that time. So give us give us some uh, give us some uh, memories there or share with us some memories that you have. What what did you remember? What did your parents tell you? Uh, tell us some tell us a few things. Okay. Um, in 1971, uh, you know, uh, our village is a very small village uh, in the southern part of our uh, village. Uh, in our country, it's a political division. The southern southern part of Bangladesh. Our main uh, communication, not by the road, it's by the canal and river. Basically, we used to, in Didan time, we used to go one place to another place using boat and uh, sometimes uh, the manual and sometimes the engine boat um, and launch steamer. Uh, so what happened during this liberation, I can remember every night when we woke up and look uh, surrounding our village are burning and all area was mostly Hindu area in Borishal, uh, the Pirozpur, at present Pirozpur district and Nazirpur Upujila. And during this uh, liberation war, uh, the population was uh, more than 60% were Hindu community. But in this area, there is a uh, many madrasa and you know, the Sursina Madrasa and the, the oldest madrasa in Bangladesh. And through this madrasa and Razakar, uh, the collaborator of Pakistani army, they basically started 
burning the village after village. And every evening, if I remember the that time, we saw the whole sky was just, you know, the, we saw the, how the village after village, the burning, and people are crying and crying and crying, the women are crying, the children are crying. So every day we was that, and in the morning time, I can remember the, on the river of Balashar, the Pak army, they used to come with the gunboat. Gunboat and our village, uh, you know, only uh, say 500, um, um, the half a mile, within the half a mile our village. So they mercilessly, they just open fire to the villagers from the gunboat and how Muslim said them, Muslim used to, uh, in the uh, riverside, they stand up with uh, the cap, the Islamic cap. And so they, the army can understand this is the Muslim village. So army didn't fire, the gunboat didn't fire the Muslim village. They fi fire, open fire to the Hindu village and Hindu area and they killed. And, and we just, when we hear the noise of gunboat, as a children, my mother and all, we just lie down on the floor so that the fire can, can't hit us. After, uh, after within a month, maybe uh, in April, my elder brother, he, just went and my four uncle, they start, they went to India to join the um, freedom fighter Vaini, uh, freedom fighter team to get training. And he was, he was at the time a student of class uh, in the 10th grade. And from the, that day, our family every day we are crying. We have a session in crying session in every evening my mother and we were talking whether my brother is alive or he killed, whether he is to India, he is getting training or not. And every day we are crying in memory of my brother. Then after, after leaving my brother and four uncles to, uh, to India, all the uh, surrounding areas, the Muslim Islamists, they become very angry on our family and they, inform the Pak army, the people are living to India and this area is very, um, you know, the Hindu are uh, getting ready to uh, protest. So on night, uh, the uh, Muslim group, 45 to 50 person came to our house and called my father. My, our forefather was landlord, so my father was a community leader. And they came to only our home and called my father. My, baba, my father's name was Nagendranath Biswas. Um, and he, uh, they called uh, Nagen Kaka, came out, we, have it, we want to talk with you. And my mother understand, they may kill my father. And my mother came out. She was so brave, I can't explain you. And she came out with a... Um, uh, you know, uh, with a knife, but very strong, the Kali used, uh, uh, we saw the uh, big, uh, you know, the knife, uh, or we call in Bengali da. Okay, if you want to talk with him, first come and talk with me. Then um, they are afraid. Then they are afraid and uh, you know what you want to talk. Then uh, the Barek Mullah, he, called within the, it was at you know we were sleeping and when they come we woke up and Barak Mullah told and all other that they are shouting you have to leave this village today night otherwise tomorrow what will happen we don't know you can understand at 10 p.m they came to our house and ordered us to leave the village and there was I told you that no car, nothing. We, we used to use the boat. Then they went 
and my father called the villagers there are 40 family and ask them we need to leave today within short time otherwise they will kill us they honor me that's why they told i honor you we, we honor you you are our leader so you have the opportunity to leave this village before that i can remember before two days those people are used to work in our house we were eating and my mother is the last person she was uh, start her eating and our worker our labor come to our house and they take all the utensils you know we use the brush glass and plate all the valuable things and they take in all this brush product and utensils all the things and my mother cannot finish her eating because they just throw the plate food and take in the plate it because plate is valuable you know it has resale value so my father called them and get prepared within one or two one hour or two hours and they bring some boat and just with some cloth you can understand some ornament and some cloth we just start all villagers together journey to india and yeah and we didn't take anything not not a single villagers and it takes when i i cannot remember who it was the first station we just throw whole night we journey towards it takes 14 days time to get this to the indian border and on the way i can remember on kalida river in the some some place in magura we just cross the river and all we get bath in the river and all clothes we for you know people just uh, keep their clothes for drying to sun sunlight and we bring some mud um, you know we call dhil um, and we, we have only some on pot on or two pot and we bring, uh, people bring the banana leaf and in this pot some rice and some pulse and bring all this um, they start cooking how can i explain with the with the leaf with the with the um, they collect some leaf some straw some other thing to make is cooked the food uh, are for cooking and maybe on the on the 14 days we ate only one time a day only rice and pulse sometimes some grass some vegetable and some rice and with water and we had some salt too yeah the food was salt rice and some leaf or some you know pulse mostly leaf and rice that was and water and salt that was our food and on the way we saw the either it was a rainy season in our country it's the soil is easily it's make the mud and you know up to knee it's down it's very hard we do not have any rock we do not have any our land is different time type so on the road we walk on the side it was very tough to walk and on the way most of the people their relative or as the old parents and grandparents you know they cannot walk and the children they cannot walk in my family member my we were my young younger brother age was 10 months I was around six years, and my middle, my second brother, he was around ten years, and my mother and my father, and my grandmother and all relatives. So you can understand what we can take in our hand. 
I fall down many times in the road because I cannot walk so long. And my father wants to hold my hand. And my mother, she always kept my brother, the 10 month old brother, in her lap. And in this way, and my, my second brother, he was capable to walk because he was 10 years old. And we saw many mothers, many father, many old people, they cannot take their parents, they kept them in the road and give some food, sometimes some bread or some rice. The, the older people, the old, they are waiting and crying. We want to go to India, we want to lie. But their son or their family member, they cannot take these old people because how they will take them? They need to take the, they need to go themselves and their young kids. So many the I have seen, I can remember the one woman, she was just trying to scrolling to want to she want to go to India to save her life. But many where I have seen they were just died in the roadside. They just fallen, and many young boy, mostly those are on the on the journey. Young boy were killed mostly. They do not allow to go young boy to India because the army know this young boy will join the freedom fighting team. They just came and take away the young boy and shoot. And in the roadside, many, many, many the dead body, where it was so, how can I explain? The dead body was, uh, is a bitter smell. Dead body you can saw when it's uh, started, uh, rotten, then what happened? So in this way, we, we are starting to go. I can remember the last day, the cantonment of Zinaida, Kaligal, we need to cross this cantonment area. There was a road. And before that day, we were in a village home. They left this house. We didn't end whole day. We, we couldn't manage any food. Because this is the last day we will go. We, we are very close to Indian border. We will go there and we will have food. So we were just waiting when the night will come. Our journey was started after 12 p.m. Say 12.30, people, people, this is the time to leave Bangladesh, uh, to cross the army camp because army was sleeping. So this was the thing, they, they will sleep and we'll cross the border. And this area was so, bad road and uh, it was raining in the night and I fall down, I can remember six or seven times. Just I'm walking two or three steps or some step and I'm falling down. And whole my whole body was with mud and my father was trying to clean me with the hand and he started walking again and in the this bed, in the morning time, we just reached to the Indian border. Then we clean in the we get bath in the rivers, and then we went to the Bonga. How we went, I cannot remember. And from this Bonga, uh, there was a rail station, and track is coming on after on track is coming, and people there just. Just like a product, or, you know, rice or pass any other thing, they are taking the people and they are putting them in the truck. And one truck go, going to Mana camp, another truck going to another camp, one truck going to Lavonrob. So people's family are yeah. splitting. Sometimes on family member went many more places. Then we leave. From that place, my mother, my auntie, my Mashima, she was in Belegata Bonga. 
we were in their house, how we went there, I don't know. And there was, we were three months with their family, then they cannot afford us. We, my family then went to Mushidabad. On high school ground, there was a camp. And you can see this many pictures. Right this moment, the refugee camp is a lot like the refugee camp was in 1971. It was quite different. In our house, it, it, sometimes during the water, during the rain, it goes under water. We bring some, you know, banana tree body, and a log, banana log, banana tree log. And on, on top of this, we try to sit and sleep. After some, after some day, the water go down. So we can start living again. During this nine months, we stayed in nine months in India. I couldn't remember how many times we ate fish. We didn't, in our family, we didn't eat the meat. So basically we live with some vegetables, some pulse and rice. That was our life. And when he come back, it was terrible. My brother came, he was a Navy, Naval commando. He got training in Navy section and he came to India, Bangladesh for fighting. And you know, when elder brother is not there, not with us and my mom, every day we cried. Maybe we'll see my brother again or we'll not see never. That was our everyday life. And when our country independent, in, he came to Bangladesh maybe in February, in the first February or the, or in the January. It's very, after the independence, we didn't stay many times in India, just we came. And when he came, we were very happy. We are going to our village. We will get, I, I was so happy that I'm going to see my home again. I'll see all these things as I, when I left our country, I just dreaming, okay, I am going. We all were very happy. We are going our village, we will see. You know, memory, we do not have other memory. Just we have a home, we have many more things there. And when he came back, we didn't get back anything. Just we we got only land. And so we had, yeah, there was some small, small tree. And everything was destroyed. So we started our life again. And as a, my father was, a, we have the position, the socially, the good position. So father cannot bring, go to being the relief. So our life was so terrible. We have to wait until we get again our crop, the rice or any crop to be feed regular, to eat regularly. I cannot explain you how a family or people, they can live without food long time. Yeah, I can remember one day, my father and brother went to the, for fishing in the river with a whole day. We didn't eat, we cannot buy any rice. So my mother fried this fish. Yes, with, they do not have oil that much. The only salt and fish, and we ate only fish. Yeah, we passed this life. Although, still now, we have 300 acre land. We have a huge land. The old Islamist, I have remembered, I can remember the Madras area. Uh, 
the madrasa name is the uh, gemadanga lilla boarding the lilla boarding they are all the students they came with a free shack and they went to looting to all the hindu village it is not the pakistani army did or yes pakistani army i can remember my on my father was talking he told in the uh, in our area the shatia lora malikali that is the area this educated people are live and they came with gun boat and they taken many hindu girl and they never come back Yes, that is so uh, so touching. I I cannot uh, I cannot imagine uh, what you have gone through. Um, I it has to be you know I you know it has to leave a mark on you and everyone who has who has gone through something like this for the rest of your lives. And uh, I you know uh, when we were doing some research on this, we came across uh, several of these pictures. and maybe uh, bengali boys or so that you guys can comment on this so first i want to just share some of the uh, you know pictures about the refugees uh, uh, people who are fleeing the uh, genocide uh, and I, you know these are the pictures that uh, you know uh, priya ji was describing so eloquently about how the refugees had to leave so this is one image of uh, uh, you know Uh, thousands of refugees were trying to uh, you know yeah. leave east pakistan at the time uh, here is the other picture that priyaji was saying that they had to walk for days and days and weeks um, this is a representative picture of that um, this is a picture of uh, refugee camps this is only 50 years ago i mean it's in a lot of people's lifetime it's not that long ago that a genocide with 2.8 million people uh, was committed uh, 55 to 60% of them were hindus and there were 500000 rapes that took place uh, and here is another picture of a refugee camp and people in the uh, people in the yeah. refugee camps so uh, you can see here um how what what people went through also that you uh, you know we put together uh, a uh, is my voice coming okay because i i got some comment that the voice is not coming okay no no um, we can hear you clearly we can okay. hear you. okay um so let me let me uh, so that we put together as part of our um, hindu pact initiative uh, we put together a website uh and i want to just share this uh, you know share this website on bangladesh uh, remembering the uh, genocide in bangladesh so uh, let me uh, let me share this uh, you know website with you and um, and maybe you and a bengali voice can uh, you know can comment on it uh, because this is uh, again this is you know this is not that long ago um i am you know and people hardly ever uh talk about it people hardly ever remember it all the you know so please uh, so that walk us through this or uh, maybe bengali voice what if you can uh, what if you can walk us through this while i put up this website um this is the bangladesh genocide 1971 website it's on hindu pact and it's on hindupact.org/bangladesh and you can see some of the pictures gruesome pictures of people uh who have been rounded up by the military people are fleeing people who are looking at all the bones that were uh, collected at some point uh all the people the death and destruction that took place and the bodies just thrown away and prg was so eloquently describing the way the women were abused over there by uh, pakistani armies and their collaborators and and so there was also a link to the article there are a lot of uh, quotes and some of them are from journalists some of them are from diplomats some of them are from uh, from actually one of the pakistani generals who uh, who said at that time he was not a general he was a lower ranking officer official who said how he was ordered to actually single out and kill uh, hindus so and then there were uh, excellent posters that which were you put together so i <clears throat> Why do we have these pictures and quotes on the screen, Utsala? Why don't you or a Bengali voice, one of you, uh, kind of go through, um, you know, go through some of the details? And we heard, uh, you know, nothing tops the uh, personal narration uh, that was given by Priya Ji 
maybe you can fill in some uh, some details uh, uh, you know as to what was discovered later how many people died things like that well yeah ajay da uh, thanks for uh, bringing me in uh, it is a deep honor uh and priyadi gave a very moving uh, personal narrative of uh, what she, she and the entire community had to go through uh the entire hindu community in bangladesh uh now if we try to dissect uh, what really happened uh then we realize that uh, the december 1970 when uh, sheikh uh, mujibur rahman he uh, and his army league uh, uh, party had a possibility to form the government he was refused uh, he even he had the majority but he was refused by pakistan to form the government and then pakistan realized that maybe a lot of um, hindus are supporting our league and there there after they decided that they will get rid of all the hindus in bangladesh and uh, the rest they will be sent back to india so the, and they got real support they got support from lot of a uh, lot of islamist organizations uh both bengalis and non bengalis um and uh, these islamist organizations were uh, supporting uh, in their genocide uh, act so this really began on uh, 26th of march 1971 with operation operation uh, searchlight and in operation searchlight the idea was uh, how to uh, systematically get rid of the hindus first the intellectuals and uh, therefore they went uh, after the jagannath uh, hall in uh, dhaka university where a lot of uh, intele- a lot of students were rounded up and uh, killed um, then a lot of intellectuals were rounded up and killed and then they uh, went uh, after ramana kali temple and they uh, bulldozed it and uh, destroyed the kali temple uh thereafter began in, in, uh, in, in, sorry to interrupt that was one of the biggest uh, bengali uh, biggest hindu mandirs in bangalore exactly in, in exactly time, exactly right? exactly yeah. exactly yeah so it was it was you know you go after the spiritual uh soul of the community and you try to destroy the spiritual soul of the community first and to, then the entire community collapses that was the basic, basic idea so now uh, once they did that then they went after uh in the in the countryside it happened in bodishal it happened in kumilla it happened in silet and it happened in many 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 other places uh the goal was to uh systematically des- uh, kill the hindus um uh, in thousands and hundreds and thousands um this was uh, one of the methodologies they had adopted uh was to put a eight sign on the hindu homes and um then uh, they could uh, the, they they could unleash um the local militia the civilian militia which they had formed and they have formed the al badr and the al hasma and uh, uh, basically lot of islamist uh, organizations they had active support of the jamaat e islami to kill the uh, hindus and uh, then uh, if we try to see that what was the reaction of the international community uh and the international community was uh, uh, if you just listen to what uh, uh, senator edward kennedy uh, who was a very senior uh, senator uh, in us and he had um, he he had uh, mentioned that uh, on the 1st of november 1971 he is saying that the hardest hit has been the members of the hindu community who has been robbed of the lands and shops systematically slaughtered and in some places painted with yellow patches marked h all of these has been officially sanctioned ordered and implemented under the martial law from islamabad more than 60% of the bengali refugees who fled to india were hindus it has been alleged that this widespread violence against hindus was motivated by policy to purge east pakistan of what was seen as a hindu and indian influence so uh, this was uh, this was by kennedy and then there was a uh, pulitzer uh, prize winner uh, uh, journalist uh, named uh, shidney uh, shanberg and um, it's uh, in a uh, it, it's mentioned uh, uh, by him that uh, the pakistani slaughtered um, 
and uh, the pakistan the hindus in the southern district of bodishal in one day according to another priest meeting was called in northeast and silet later troops arrived and from the uh, from the gathered crowd selected 300 hindus and shot them dead so uh, this is about the men now the jamaat e islami declared along with the pakistan army that uh, this whole uh, all the hindu women are public property and therefore what started was for example they would go to a village or city uh, and then they would uh, uh, open the artillery on the uh, hospitals and all the um, uh, whole whole city is in total chaos they would separate out the women and give it to the pakistan army for uh, raping them and in thousands and so 200000 to 300000 is a number that is usually put forward by the international uh, by the uh, uh, international media of the women hindu women who were raped uh, but there is a very interesting um, uh, there is a very interesting comment by uh, one of the doctors who uh, went to uh, from australia to treat uh, to uh, for abortion of the hindu uh, women who were raped and um, he mentions that this 200 to 300000 number is uh, it is uh, just a misnomer it is uh, it is not uh, correct uh, there is a underestimate of uh, underestimation of what uh, really took place uh, his name was dr jeffrey davis and uh, he said that 200000 to 4000 400000 rape victims were underestimation on the actions of the pakistani army said they kept the infantry back and put artillery head and they would shell the hospitals and schools and that caused absolute chaos in the town and then the infantry would go in and begin to separate the women apart from little children all those who were um, all, uh, all the women were taken in and women would be put in compound under guard and made available to the troops so that was the kind of barbarism that we are uh, witnessing here yeah. so this kind of age reminds us of what the jews had to go through um in uh, and it, it's said that um, uh, general uh, tikka khan so this was taking place under general niazi general tikka khan was another very senior uh, pakistani uh, army official who was called the butcher of bengal and uh, they are all uh, citing one after another uh, pakistani uh, 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 Pakistani documents saying that the aim is to rid uh, Bangladesh of the Hindus. They are the problem makers. They are. They, we want to purify the land. Kind of, you know, that kind of uh, statement is coming out. Uh, now Because we also the... realize that Sorry. what impact it was having in West Bengal, because that is where uh, it is just not a genocide that impacted the Hindus of Bangladesh, uh, but the Hindus of West Bengal. Uh, received some around 10 million hindus uh coming as refugees with nothing um uh, so uh, what happened um really and i've heard it many times from my parents that uh, the once these refugees came they had to be given jobs and uh, the factories in west bengal had to provide them jobs but there were many people in a demand supply situation of economics we know that when there are many job seekers and there are few jobs uh that people lot of people lot of jobs uh don't are not very high paying then anymore because there are many in supply is more and then once you have these jobs as very low paying you can't even feed the family of many so the trade unionism became rampant and once trade once trade unionism became rampant the uh they were they were targeting the officials of the company they were targeting uh, they were closing down the company and then the companies themselves had to be shut down and uh, they had to be relocated elsewhere so businesses started moving out uh, then uh, because there were many hungry stomachs to feed communism became uh, rose uh, and people were targeting anyone who had land and so it was it was an imaginary situation of class divide that uh, took over and so hindus went after against hindus 
so it was it was the loss the biggest loss was for the hindus of west bengal so, so let, me, let me interrupt you just for a second because i before i move on to the uh, situation that exists today i just wanted to uh, you know uh, uh, get so there's a take on what has been said so far and then we'll progressively kind of uh, move towards the towards what happened and you kind of just already got us started on that um but uh, before we go to today's situation right uh, and how we how we ended up where we are today and we're going to get there in just a few minutes i want to uh, i want to uh, find out um, uh, so uh, so what happened to the perpetrators of the 1971 uh genocide i mean there is this pakistani army involved and uh, we have already made uh, references to general tika khan and ya uh, uh, general tika khan and general niazi uh, so we have already talked about it what happened to them and what happened to the other soldiers uh, in, uh, in 1971 100000 pakistani soldiers actually surrendered to the indian army were there any repercussions on them were there any repercussion to the uh, jihadi collaborators uh, the uh, who were called razakars uh, did they face any consequences so there there were a consequences for uh, some of the islamists uh, who we call as razakars who were collaborating with the pakistani army and were committing the genocides uh albeit it is not been fully done and it has been done quite late i mean didi can priya didi can uh, talk about it uh, it's only recently then that a few of them have faced justice and the process is ongoing but what is very bothersome and what is really worrying and the world global community needs to really uh, put its act together on this including india is the fact that almost 90000 pakistani uh, uh, military forces that were uh, surrendered who surrendered to the indian army were all let go because the crimes they committed was uh, in in those days as india put it was not against indians and therefore they really got scot free for the genocide of 3 million people i mean pakistan's prime minister in those days had actually gone on record saying kill 3 million of them and the rest of them will eat from our hands so they they haven't denied uh, the numbers uh, i mean they haven't denied the genocide it's just that the world global community hasn't followed up and what can be done now and what needs to be done now is to revisit it because as as we know you know armenians got the recognition of their genocide 100 years after the genocide was committed at the us congress Uh, lit- it took them 100 years to get it recognized and th- what happened in germany in- during the holocaust obviously got recognized right away but it takes sometimes it takes generations to bring these people to justice and there are enough examples in the last 20 25 years of people being brought to justice for the crimes they have committed against humanity uh, even 20 30 50 100 years after they have committed those crimes uh obviously if it's 100 years then you know somebody else has to pay for it but it's not too late it's been 50 years the people who committed these crimes on behalf of pakistan are senior military leadership senior civilian leadership with very powerful positions within pakistan and very powerful uh, uh, uh bank accounts outside pakistan as we know how pakistan operates so it is not too late and i would i would let uh, priya didi talk about what should be done and how, what can be done and how it can be done i would let bengali voice talk about what should be done and what can be done so, so one one question to add to that right uh, and um, while you're answering that also tell us what happened to the uh, the jihadi collaborators are they uh, you know did they face any consequences um I, i occasionally see news items of uh, some of the jamaat e islami leaders uh, being prosecuted in bangladesh but what about, i mean the 500000 women were raped they were not done by like four people there is a you know this crime was committed by tens of thousands of people what are the consequences they are facing the 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 consequences see that that's a very good question to ask because the scale and the and the magnitude of the massacre was not committed by uh, just few people you are absolutely right the so consequences has been faced by a few people and uh, there has been tribunals and this the credit goes to the 
the the bangladeshi community especially the 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 secular bangladeshi muslims and the hindus of bangladesh who have worked very hard over the last 30 years to get some of these people to justice there have been tribunals there have been uh, death sentences that have been carried out but largely the the bigger number of people including many bangladeshi islamists who live in america they are, they live in brooklyn who have escaped uh, the the consequences of their brutal crimes and uh, so i think we need to we need to uh, really revisit this and uh, only a few people bring, being brought to justice is not enough and uh, we need to you know we need to really look at this uh bengali voice you want to add something priya didi uh... yes surely there are some of the things like i would add, like to add here that um uh, one uh, one of the things is that the people who committed these crimes and who are the people and they are um uh, they are very clearly there is a professor his name is rj rumel is a professor of political science at university of hawaii and he says that the genocide and genocidal atrocities were also perpetrated by lower ranking officers and ordinary soldiers these willing executioners were fueled by an abiding anti hindu racism especially against uh, the uh, hindu minority and uh, bengalis were compared with monkeys and chickens and general nearsy says that uh, the bengalis are to jews as to the nazis and uh, the scum and vermin that the best be exterminated so all this together what really leads to is uh, is eventually it was 195 officers which who under whom the blame came but it was just not the officers it was also the low ranking low uh, it was not just the high ranking officials it was low ranking officers as well who were responsible for this crime along with this jamaat e islami segments al badr and al hasma and groups who were also doing the rajakas that you call so what has happened is this uh, entire pakistani army went back to pakistan the 195 officers were supposed to be tried and bangladesh agree bangladesh uh, uh, accepted pakistan's proposal of trying them because 400000 bangladeshis were also in pakistan who had to come back so uh, so uh, while these 195 officers uh, 1973 there was some resolution but after mujib's death nothing happened really on these 195 officers and they some of them died but there are many low ranking officers because they are saying that if uh, general um, dikka khan or general uh, niazi they themselves are rapists then what about the officers the officers also followed them so they these officers who are today senior office, officials in the pakistan army they need to be tried they need to be brought to justice as far as the nothing has happened so far as far as the uh, local rajakars uh, the uh, collaborators some of them have been tried by the bangladesh uh, government because they were also involved in uh, cases related to mujib's murder and uh, some of them have been uh, put to death sentence but there are very few that uh, have been done i mean the scale was massive in fact you know the Gu- the guinness book says that um, this was the uh, th- this was the uh, fourth fifth largest um, fifth largest uh, mass uh, genocide uh, in the 21st uh, in the in the uh, in the history of asia and uh, so uh, all all this is uh, very important that we g- uh, provide justice to those who suffered and the only way we can do that is to essentially essentially uh, put to trial the uh, large sections of the pakistan army uh, officers today who were essentially responsible for this genocide and uh, the rape and the atrocities uh, mm-hmm. 
So oh. this, uh, the, uh, so this is where things stand today. So, uh, Priyaji, do you want to add anything to this? Yes, um, I want to add. Uh, I just told my personal story uh, because this is the genocide month. Um, yeah, we need first the trial of the Pakistani army who start killing and they killed the innocent people. You know, it was not the war time. It was nothing. These people. They didn't die during the war, not that. They just start killing on 25th March and they start killing on the Hindu community. The Jagannath Hall, the Shakari Bazaar, most of the area and the Shakari Bazaar on the single day, uh, on, the, on the 25th and 26th, they killed um, 100,000 and most of them were Hindu because they wanted to stop, but because the Hindu were the educated. Still now, Hindu education rate is 10% higher than the other community. And then in 1971, it was mostly Hindu where the, they were the school going and other they are the educated community. So educated community know that they fight against the communal force. Um, so that they start killing the Hindu community, the educated community, the intellectual community. So we need to, what we need to do, we need to bring to the, um, in the light, in the, we need uh, the recognition from United Congress and UN and EU from all over the world. When we will get a recognition. And not only that, we, can, we need to go each and every state to get recognition and every city corporation and municipality in the USA. So to get, first we need to get recognition of the genocide and to bring the culprit, the who without any, you know, without any crime and without any war, they kill the innocent people. So they have to bring under the trial and they killed and this is the communal force is still exist not only in Bangladesh, they are working still now, they are working across the world. They want to destroy the civilization. So these criminal are not, nobody will give them shelter because everywhere they will do the same crime and this crime cannot be continued. As a, as a human being, we need to stop this crime, we need to stop, uh, we need to make them weaker, we need to uh, bring under trial if we have to uh, survive. The world uh, needs to survive and grow. And with this criminal, with this culprit, with this killer, it cannot happen. So, In fact, uh, it has gone the other way, right? What is the, uh, uh, so, uh, so then let me ask you this because you study these things. How many Hindus are left in Bangladesh today? Yeah. So, so it is it is about uh, ten percent of the population right now. And what was it in 1971? Uh, 19, less than 1969 or 1970? Oh, it was in 74. Uh, we were uh, almost 19 percent, 8.7 percent, 18.7 percent before the liberation war. I can give you a calculation. And that calculation is uh, the how uh, the 27. Uh, 2.7 million Hindu were killed during this liberation war. I have a calculation. In 1971, the population was uh, 9.4 on uh, million. And it should be in 19, uh, you know, uh, in 1947, the population should be uh, 13. Point 24 million, but in 1974, it was only 9.65 million. There was shortfall the 3.58 million and Indian government and Indian, the document that is record, only 1.11 million people are refused to India. So that the gap between the census, the 61 census and 74 census, and refugee recorded in India, if you uh, calculate this, 
easily you can find 2.7 million people are missing the hindu people are missing so census is the proof you need not go through any other thing only if you go to the 60 bangladesh government census record you will find the people are no more where they are where they are so really good question so the world the world it's easily to pro, it's very easy to probe how many people they killed it, there should be two way either in bangladesh census record either bangladesh government had to tell they these people went to they go to india otherwise we killed them people are not evaporated yeah that is true correct and and the thing is that even if you assume that there is a you know 1% 2% 5% margin of error in these censuses the numbers are so mind boggling i mean you you cannot evaporate as as did he happily put it you can you can you can say there is an error of you know 2.7 million can be 2.5 million but yes. you cannot remove 2 million people from the face of this planet without knowing where they are yes. so even if the worst of critiques of this this narrative uh, you know the pakistani even the pakistanis cannot deny the fact that millions of people especially hindus really were killed in 1971 and i think that is the part that uh, american hindus need to really focus on and that is the part that american hindus need to educate everybody else on i mean i i have to say that our community has to take some of the blame and when i say our community it's the hindu american community because we are all in america and we are well to do it's not like we have we haven't been had the opportunity to speak about this we have had opportunities over the last 50 years to speak about it we haven't so there is a some responsibility that hindu americans have to take there is some responsibility that our youth have to take the youth has you know we are very vocal about you know the, the our vice president of america has is of indian origin how many times has she spoken about this tragedy that comes from her part of the world i mean she calls herself south asian so many times so if you are going to call about south yourself a south asian let me ask our younger generations in america like how many of you have spoken about the genocide of 2 million plus hindus in bangladesh just one generation ago let's be south asians and talk about it okay i want to give that uh, some you know the chuknagor the on place in the on day they kill uh, in the may uh, the chuknagor uh, killing day was uh, may 10 1971 in the on place they killed more than 15000 hindu they call them we will give no when hindu were ready to go to india and the local the collaborator they called the pakistani army and they came and surrounded these people because they were they came from bagherhat khulna borishal pirozpur potuakhali bhola they want to go to india through bonga border you know uh, through uh, the benapol border petrapol in india in bangladesh is benapol this is the border to go to india so they were in a one place and in a on single day whole day they surrounded the area and killed and 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 the same way the shakhari bazar on the 26th march they killed 1100 hindu and on the other area in the kharani ganj in the same month they killed uh, around 16000 hindu and on a spot so there is many more mass graveyard mass killing spots the massacre so my appeal is to all um, hindu american community i have all this information i have all this uh, commitment and i am ready to go any fire you can request me you can call me i can be a witness how the genocide going on and you need to pass the bill in every city corporation every state in every corner every university there should be a library for the hindu genocide in bangladesh and i am i want to talk one word when uh 
100 crore Hindu living in India, how they are Bangladeshi and Pakistan Islamist, they tortured and killed every day, and Indian Hindu and the world Hindu, the American Hindu, they are not talking a single word about this. How? Are they human beings? Do they think they have some responsibility for the world? We are human beings. This is not a crime, being a Hindu. You are talking for Palestinian people. You are talking for any on single things happen in India or in Kashmiri people. You are talking in all other people, for European people. You are crying for Rohingya. Yes, I am crying too for Rohingya, what's happening? But they are 25,000, they are demanding. Also, they have made it terrorist outfit among this Rohingya community. But the Hindu community of Bangladesh, we do not have crime report. We do not have a single terrorist. We do not have any bad record. We are the educated. We are the custodian of Bengali Hindu culture and history. So my appeal to all Hindu American community, please save us. Please work for humanity. Please work for preserve the, our heritage. We are the son of the soil. Where we go is still now almost 20 million people are there. Please help them to stay in their own country. So really you, good. Boys, you are so strong. You are American Hindu community is the largest educated talent, cultural, and wealthy community. And they are well accepted in America. If they talk, if they try, you, the community, can save us. Please, please so, don't. Let me, let, me, let me come to that in just a second. Let me uh, bring in uh, the Bengali voice. And uh, you started, uh, uh, Bengali voice, uh, you started talking about, and I want, I want to remind our viewers that uh, for multiple reasons, uh, the person using the name Bengali voice has decided to be anonymous uh, for personal safety and other reasons. Um, I, I want to ask you this question. Where you started the conversation a little while ago about how the situation in Bengal has progressed. So why don't we pick it up from where you left off, where after 1971, uh, after 1971, what happened, and uh, where, how did the Bangladesh, how did the uh, Bangladesh uh, Hindu community end up where it is today? And uh, where, uh, you know, basically over the past 50 years, the number of Hindus in Bangladesh has progressively uh, uh, gone oh. down. Uh, in fact, uh, not only that, uh, we know that uh, Priyaji had to uh, get asylum second time uh, in her lifetime, and now this time in the U.S. Uh, so how did we, so uh, let me, uh, so uh, Bengali voice, tell us what happened to the Hindus in Bangladesh after 1971. And then, uh, PSG, after that, uh, please chime in after the Bengali voice uh, gives his opinion. Go ahead, Bengali voice. Right. So uh, to look into what really happened to the Hindus of Bangladesh, first of all, a lot of people, uh, so when, uh, you know, three, um, three million people have been killed and uh, uh, half a million uh, women have been raped, uh, then uh, the impact is enormous because uh, against every, uh, even against three million killed, there'll be 10 million or more. So there is a number which says in the US Senate, it was discussed and said that um, 50 million people have been displaced from Bangladesh. Uh, 50 million Hindus uh, have been missing from Bangladesh. So the missing means where did they go? Uh, did they disappear? No. Uh, either they were converted, but converting such a large scale people is a oh. problem. So they must have, most of them must have taken shelter in Bharat, right? So uh, we have a population of 50 million, many European countries put together, that population comes. Uh, that population took shelter in Bharat. Now, after 1970, this process started in 1971 in a big way. It process started in 1947, but then it subsided a little bit. 1971 was another major event. So in all these events of the Indians where genocide against Hindus are taking place, there is Hindus are not able to fight back uh, because we are not 
we are disciplined people. We don't believe in killing others randomly, right? So now uh, we, uh, because of that, we are at the suffering end. But there is also no justice being done. Um, no trials for these Pakistani uh, soldiers, uh, of officials, uh, army officers, uh, junior officers that yesterday, today they are senior officers in the Pakistan army. No trial against them, no trial against these Jamaat Islami and all these Islamist groups. So that is emboldening them to commit another set of genocide again and again and again. And it's continuing even today. I mean, no government in Bangladesh can stop that. So that process is, so the numbers that we are seeing falling from 22%, 17%, 18% all the way to now 7 8%, that number, the 37 million people missing, which uh, Priyadi had talked about, that number is because this genocide is continuing. And now what's happening to West Bengal? The same labor problem that you had before, the same problem of land and issues that you had before. Now, why do you need CAA today? You need CAA because for 70 years, these people came to West Bengal. Where are they living? Next to the railway lines, in shanties. They cannot... If they are always in the fear of being deported to Bangladesh. If they're deported to Bangladesh, they will be killed again. You are a Hindu. And they cannot provide education to their children because they don't have the papers. They cannot get the government jobs because they don't have the papers. They cannot own land. So you are living in a perpetual, you're entrapped, but at the same time, big credit must be given to them. They have not given up their faith. They are still Hindus. They still call themselves Hindus. So we have not acknowledged somewhere the fact that they have not given up their faith. That is, that is something we need to bow down before them and respect them for it. That uh, everything has been destroyed. The economy has been destroyed for, as I say, said, the ways it was destroyed. Um, the political system was destroyed and the communism has come in a big way because you have to accommodate the some aspirations of the people on how they will figure out a living and communism never provides that solution it's just a uh, it's just a oasis or some kind of a uh, illusion uh, but uh, in the one thing that we have to still respect is the people who have not given up their faith they, and um, have not submitted to the Islamists, the will of the Islamists. And uh, their will have proven stronger. So the CA is a big tribute to that, those people. But we have to do more to ensure that justice is done somewhere. Like, as Utshabda was telling that, you know, people came together to provide justice to these Islamists, uh, to uh, put to trial to the Islamist groups. Um, the Islamist leaders, um, some of them have been sentenced for life, uh, some executed. We have to do more of those things and we have to constantly drum up against Pakistan, against these uh, groups, like groups like uh, Kair. We have to keep on telling them that, look, why are you not talking about prosecuting the Pakistani officers? You have to do that. Yep. I uh, completely agree. So, uh, Priyadi, tell us uh, you know, your your story. Why uh, why did you end up as a refugee second time, and this time in U.S.? How did you tell us your story about how you how you ended up in uh, United States, and um, why are you not back in Bangladesh? What happened? I came to join um, the uh, second ministerial to advance religious freedom program organized by the State Department of USA. When was that? It was uh, 16 July, uh, 2019. Oh, just a couple, not even two years ago? Yeah. OK, and, and uh, what happened? Uh, I was uh, in a round table. I was a speaker. I came here only for two days and three nights. I didn't bring my, I, I bring only one luggage with uh, three shari and two blouse petticoat like this, you know? Just I came and I, I have to go back on uh, 19th, uh, the July 19th at uh, my flight was 8.30 p.m. Uh, 
PM. And I was just, um, and in this ministerial, uh, I was invited uh, as a speaker. And uh, my, I was supposed to talk on 7, July 17, and I present my paper on 17 July, and there were, I got the opportunity uh, to talk um, with the president because um, uh, the participants were from 135 country, among them uh, the victim, only uh, 27 people were, got opportunity to talk with president and we met him and among them 27, 13 people had talk and I was one of them. And uh, before coming here, uh, the criminal, the Islamist group, um, with the support of political party, uh, they have taken our 300 acre land and uh, on the March, July, uh, on the March 2019, they burned my parents' home, but no culprit arrested yet. So I talk about uh, this thing, the 37 million, the minority community missing from Bangladesh and they have, I have lost everything. They have taken my land and they have burned my home. And this, I talk only 43 seconds with president. And this 43 second video went viral. The, I talk- you mean President Trump, uh, is that yeah. who you were sitting with? Okay. Yeah, I was sitting with President Trump. And this video went viral in Bangladesh. Uh, I do not know the, you know, the talking time, it was on live, it was a live program. So other people also talk, uh, uh, you know, 13 people talk about their uh, situation. I talk only 43 seconds. And this 43 seconds went viral and Bangladesh was stuck shaken. And more than a month, um, all television uh, talk show and everything was surrounding Piyasha because I talked with president at US government when came to know the Bangladesh, they are getting billion, billion dollars from USA and from across the world for Rohingya refugee. But when they, other people will know the Rohingya refugee is not only one fact, Bangladesh also making many people ref refugee every year is uh, uh, many times than Rohingya. Rohingya is almost uh, uh, a million, but Bangladeshi Hindus and many million have to be refused to India. So, uh, and all the government machinery and the uh, communal force, they talk against seriously against me and they surrounded my home, they, my, you know, they wanted to rave, kill my family member, my elder, my younger brother went to India, uh, India, and my um, own nephew went to India, and my old relatives was went on secret place. And country was just it is. Uh, they tried to. They tried to give all blame to Bangladesh minority community, and minority community was a serious threat. Then. I went to the State Department with the Zeh Kansara and he, um, with the, from Hindu American Foundation. And I talked with uh, Sam Brownback, the Senator, and she, he was very kind. And he talked with the State Department and they then, the State Department, they intervened, the USA government intervened to the Bangladesh government to bring the situation um, come down. And when the, uh, uh, the under secretary, the assistant secretary general, Ellis Wells, called Bangladesh government uh, to be shut down or to be quiet. Then they stop our prime minister uh, called uh, other people. Okay, we'll see later. Uh, let's, uh, let's have come to the country. And the, from the police, from the political party, and they bring my issue up to the parliament. They discuss in the parliament. And this is only two years ago, right? Yeah. Not two years ago, you know, and uh, I, do, I do not want to mention the name uh, because, you know, uh, so people, they want to, they put uh, 10 
sedition case against me in every area they were preparing to uh, file a suit uh, a defamation suit against me i tarnished the country image um, yeah so uh, so that I cannot. But that's that. really. I mean, you know. So I think they're making. It's it's so uh, it's so uh, sad that uh, you have gone through this once um, in 1971, and you're you know going through the prosecution again in 2019 and 2020. Uh, so the, uh, let me uh, let me bring you in to close this out. And thank you, Priyaji, for that. I really appreciate it. Um, so that um, what is it that uh, tell us a little bit more about the in a couple of minutes about the HRCBM and um, what is um, you know uh, what is it what are you guys uh, you know what I mean by you guys is what are we doing uh, in HRCBM and other Hindu organizations are doing uh, for the fiftieth uh, to remember this genocide and uh, really uh, you know take this issue to the uh, to American people and to Hindu youth in America. Uh, so, go ahead. so Human Rights Congress for Bangladesh Minorities, HRCBM, is an organization which Priya D is leading now as its executive director. Uh, Mr. Dhiman Dev Chaudhary, who is the president uh, of the organization, has uh, started it in 2001 when uh, Hindus faced a real uh, uh, aggression and, and attacks in uh, 2001, again, because of the political uh, climate in Bangladesh and Islamists attacking Hindus in large numbers. This is a United Nations uh, uh, recognized, recognized consultative group. Uh, it's a 501c3. So I will just list out three or four points that uh, we should be looking at as American Hindus. Number one, support HRCBM, which is a 501c3. Uh, donate to them. Uh, you can go to their website, hrcbm.org, and donate to them. They are actually coming up with a new website because this is a website that was designed in 2002. and and it's been revived now on this 50th anniversary uh, of 1971 to uh, reach out to the community. So HRCBM- so, I just want to add that HRCBM uh, was our Hindu Seva Act uh, or Charity of the Week. And uh, there are again, our chosen Hindu Seva uh, Charity or Char Seva Act of the Week. So I just wanted to kind of mention yeah. that. Uh, so in our, we will be we are, we are doing a special segment along the way. So please uh, go to hrcbm.org. So that is that the website? Correct. And okay. it, it looks a little dated because it's still the old website. They are working on the new website, but the mailing address, uh, the donation, and uh, all the details are correct. So you can also follow HRCBM on Twitter. It's uh, twitter.com slash hrcbm and you can get information there you can follow hrcbm on facebook just uh, look up hrcbm uh, and you will you will be able to join the group and uh, in addition that is point number one point number two is that organizations like hrcbm organizations like hindu pact and any other organizations that are interested hindu american foundation they're all working together uh, in many ways to come up with the uh, 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 outreach effort that not only reaches the American community at the city and grassroots level, but also the Hindu American community, which itself needs education on this. So on this 50th year of this genocide, uh, there is a project that uh, works on outreach on this effort. Uh, Priya Didi is working on it very hard. Uh, I have been putting in a little bit of effort on it as well. Bengali Voice has always been, a, uh, he has been doing this every year. So this is not new for him. Uh, so this is something that we have to really go out with. Number three, we need to demand at the policy level that American lawmakers, uh, both at, at the Congress as well as the executive level, apply Magnitsky Act on the Pakistani military leadership and thus make it uh, relevant that they pay for their crimes in 1971. If you need to look up Magnitsky Act, find out what it means. It is a good way to bring them to justice at least from the American perspective. Number three, I would want everybody else, everybody else who are, who's listening to us to bring this up at your community level. If you have connections in the local city, you have connections in the uh, state legislature, bring in a commemoration, uh, something official, you know, get a, get a day of genocide declared. This entire year is important. If your city council can bring a resolution on declaring Pakistan a perpetrator of genocide in 1971, do it, do it. I know American Hindus and Indian Americans have a lot of influence. Do it at your own level. Don't worry about, if you don't know somebody at the national level, don't worry about it. Bring it at your level. 
and that's with uh, i think those are the three four points i would like to bring up so so that i i want to bring up the hindu phobe of the week as a regular segment and is very pertinent here today uh, and maybe I'll, i'll play this 30 second clip and then have you comment on that so please uh, please uh, uh, you know uh, be prepared to and and uh, you know him uh, bengali boys if you want to add any comments to this please feel free to this is the hindu phobe of the week the banner is targeted in bangladesh this is a result of a facebook post uh take a look at this so temporary camps of police were set up in the village for the safety of affected people earlier this week thousands of hardline islamist organization supporters had attacked a hindu village a mob attacked with a makeshift with makeshift weapons and vandalized 70 to 80 houses they looted and ransacked many houses the incident came after a hindu man criticized the group's joint secretary general on social media If as the Islam a leader staged a protest against the Facebook post to bring the situation under control please arrested the youth the same night so the comments on this uh, incident that happened in Bangladesh Bangladesh doesn't seem to be a very safe place uh, for Hindus what's going on right so my thought on this would be that uh, uh this genocide which took in 70 47 71 is continuing till today because these organizations islamist organizations jamaat islami um and others they are very strong they uh, they are able to commit these atrocities and there is no justice there is no justice uh, because we as a hindu community are not able to build up enough international pressure so that we bring, we ensure that justice is done uh, we when we are put on the back foot uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, caa uh, and uh, caa is something that is giving not taking away citizenship of anybody it is giving rights to these millions and millions of people living in miserable conditions hindus in india uh, who have been thrown out from bangladesh and living in miserable conditions with no dignity uh, with uh, no uh, rights of their uh, right, uh, rights worth mentioning and uh, and in uh, miserable financial condition these people are being given rights by ca and we should celebrate it we should not be in the back foot we should not uh, be worried about what kair and all these groups are saying they are working as uh, front ends for the islamists so we we should take up strong positions and say that these pakistani army officers need to be booked need to be brought to justice and then uh, these islamists need to be brought to justice and we should work together we should join hands with all different groups and we should ensure that justice is uh, prevailed otherwise this genocide will never stop this uh, and uh, the indian uh, the, the nation uh, indian nation will suffer bharat will suffer because there will be uh, the, the refugees will keep coming there is still 10% of the population 16 million people still hindu still in bangladesh on the, on the official level on the on official level it's even more they try to put down the numbers because so that you know uh, we Uh, our strength is not revealed uh, uh, so there are a lot of people who if this refugee crisis continues if there's no justice done then there's no end to it and uh, bharat's economy will suffer because we have to provide jobs to these people we have to empower the hindus in bangladesh themselves and to do that the only option is to ensure that we come together and put international pressure to uh, bring to justice pakistan the officers army officers and the islamists in bangladesh thank you uh, thank you bengali boys uh, so that i want to uh, unless you have any final comments i want to close this out with a couple of quick things uh, do you have any final comments before i go to uh, two more uh, quick uh, items that we have on the list for today no i think i think both priya the and bengali boys have there is they, they have brought in so much information so many details i think we i would i would close in with that and i would just appeal to everybody to think about it 
Right. So there are a couple of final comments. One is that Hindu PAC, as a uh, as an uh, initiative of VHPA, uh, issued a statement this week on the attacks on Asian Americans, and there's a uh, it's on our website. If you go to hindupac.org and you click on media and press releases, uh, this is the first item that you will see, and you click on it and you'll see our entire statement. Uh, we did a whole show last week, and we didn't even know at that time of the magnitude of this. Uh, attack that was going to happen uh, in in this week but we we kind of talked about it we said that uh, you know the the there's a growing number of uh, violent attacks on asian americans and we need to under, and we analyze the underlying causes for that and we could have hardly foreseen the tragic events that unfolded in atlanta over the week and i think this uh, you know uh, this really gives uh, uh, everyone uh, an impetus to go back and look at our uh, Hindu, Hindu uh, Lounge episode number 45 and to really understand why these attacks are happening and why Hindu, uh, be, uh, so, uh, Hindu Americans are included in their, uh, the other Asian Americans, whether they're Chinese or Filipinos or Japanese, Koreans, all of us. Uh, are being attacked in a, in a physical, violent way. And we need to understand the underlying causes why these attacks are taking place. Uh, these kinds of attacks have no place in America. And we really hope that, uh, the, uh, that uh, people come together and in strongest terms denounce such attacks and we, we, you know, the law enforcement, the law, uh, the, uh, the law enforcement um, authorities have to really, you know, uh, think about how they are going to protect uh, the Asian American uh, minorities. And it's not just upon them; it's also the politicians who are who have been othering uh, the, uh, you know, Asian Americans uh, for multiple reasons, whether it's racial reasons, economic, and the whatever it is. I mean, we really need to rise above that and educate everyone that, look, I mean, there is a net positive, positive impact of Asian Americans, Indian Americans included, Hindu Americans included, people who follow Dharmic traditions included, who are making uh, this net positive impact on the American society. And finally, with Sada, um, you know, uh, we, we have this new segment that I want to end with and take only, uh, you know, we cannot always have uh, this, you know, uh, you know, uh, the things that we, you know, uh, that are always, uh, you know, in some ways uh, uh, sad, we also want to make sure that we also convey that, look, there is, uh, there is good news and, and we, want to, uh, we want to convey this good news as well. And the good news, uh, so that is uh, the Hindu good news of the day. I think there's, as you know, there's a lot of attempt uh, going on in, uh, in India to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, A, uh, convert the tribal the people uh, in India from various parts of India to uh, other religions, primarily Christianity. And then there's also this uh, attempt, uh, simultaneous attempt going on to call, the, to call them non-Hindu anywhere. They're not Hindus anywhere. So it turns out that in Jharkhand state of India, uh, a lot of the Hindus over there were converted mostly because of uh, force, fraud, inducement, uh, things like and and false promises. And a lot of these uh, Hindus, 181 families, uh, readopted Hindu dharma. And these are the kinds of news items in the Burmasi Kalyan Ashram and other organizations were involved in that. And now, in this particular case, it was the Narvarnasi Kalyan Ashram. It was a Dharma Jagran and Tribal Suraksha Manch uh, that was involved in that. And we want to uh, thank uh, uh, this organization, Dharma Jagran and Suraksha uh, and Tribal Suraksha Manch, uh, for really educating the people and uh, you know explaining to them how uh, the tribal community has been an integral part of Hindu dharma. After all, Sri Ram spent 14 years in various, um, in, in, uh, in the, in Banvas, in various forests in India, and developed, you know, 7,000 years ago, uh, developed this really close, um, you know, family uh, uh, relationships. Uh, he was revered among all the tribals in, uh, and, uh, 
uh, as much as he was in the cities and towns in India. So um, for, for that, I just want to share this good news that there are good things happening and it's, you know, and we want to, uh, you know, we want to celebrate the good things as and when they happen. With that, it's so that I want to bring the Hindu Lounge episode number 46 to a close. I want to remind everyone we come live every Sunday at 11 o'clock Eastern. Um, the Hindu Pact is brought to you, uh, Hindu Lounge rather is brought, it comes live every Sunday at 11 o'clock Eastern. Hindu Lounge is brought to you by Hindu Pact. Hindu Pact is the policy research and advocacy initiative of World Hindu Council of America, VHPA, with co-hosts uh, Ajay Shah, uh, I'm Ajay Shah, and my co-host uh, Utsa Chakrabarti, who is the executive director of Hindu Pact. With that, I want to thank our guest, special guest, Priya Saji and the Bengali Voice for joining us today and making this event very personal, very special. And we will we, we really hope and pray that the voice of Bengalis from East Bengal is heard, not just in India, not just in US, but around the world. And the perpetrator of crimes against humanity are brought to justice. With that, Utsada, Thank you very much and namaste.